put your hands together. The spectacular Kim Congdon. Thank you. Do we need to do that again? I tripped on the cord. <laughs> Can we do it one more time? Yeah, all right, hell yeah. You guys, please give me that same... I love you all for coming out. Thank you guys so much. I'll be right back and less clumsy. Stupid bitches. Rusty Mac on the drums. Got I wife that bitch. I got that pussy in my drug even if I had a wife and kids. Lots of honeys in this list full of dummies. But the baddest bitch of all is the only one that's funny. And it's kind of bitch. You guys fucking look good tonight. Everybody looks really nice. Beautiful couple over here. What a, together a long time. You can tell. You can always tell. I get so weird when I like a guy. I don't like who I become when I have a crush on a guy. I completely change. I do things that are not me at all. Like the other day, the guy that I have a crush on, he posted a meme, and the meme said, girls with the best pussy have the smallest TVs. <laughs> I thought it was funny, too. <laughs> Then the next day, I uploaded a picture of myself watching Netflix on my Apple Watch. <laughs> I was like, ah. It's my big screen. <laughs> my eyes. It hurts. Yeah, I get weird. I don't even know how long I should wait to have sex with a guy when I like him. I know that there is a scale that I feel like is appropriate. I feel like that's anywhere between like 10 minutes <laughs> and a month and a half. I think that's good, that gives everyone time, right? Like, I can't stand when a bitch brags about waiting like longer than that. We've all met that girl, right? She's like, we've been dating three months and we haven't even had sex yet. I wanna be like, bitch, you haven't had sex yet. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think he's been so patient? <laughs> Stupid. Uh, men are so horny, especially when you first start dating them. When you first start dating a guy, you gotta fuck him all the time. You gotta fuck him like five times a day. You know, I see it. <laughs> She's looking at me like a prisoner of cum. <laughs> when you first get with a dude, you gotta like, you gotta treat him like a newborn. You gotta wake up every two hours. <laughs> Pop a titty in their mouth. <laughs> Put him back to sleep. And once they're sleeping, you can't move. You have to crawl out of the room, right? Because if you wake them up, you got to take out the other titty. Yeah. <laughs> she fucking knows, dude. That's God's rules, not mine. <laughs> Blame him. Fuck, man. I used to have a joke about dick size, but I stopped doing it. I did. People were getting so mad at me. Um, it was doing great in black rooms, but... <laughs> But people do not like when you talk about small dicks at comedy shows. It makes the room really tense. It does. Feel that? <laughs> Everyone's like, stop talking about small dicks. <laughs> Those are the shooters. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, blanks. <laughs> I'm not saying that every dude with a small dick is a mass shooter. That would be crazy. I'm just saying I don't feel like mass shooters have hogs. <laughs> you know? They gotta get through those hallways fast. <laughs> they gotta hit 102, 103, the playground, the nurse's office. <laughs> Can't forget the nurse's office. I don't fuck with mass shootings. <laughs> They're, they're not my thing. I don't know how to fix them, but I know that uh, arming teachers, that I don't think that's the solution. I don't, I know it's very controversial, but I, please follow along. Why would we arm teachers if we can't trust them not to fuck the students? <laughs> One thing at a time, people. <laughs> they're like in cahoots with the Catholics, it's crazy. And I gotta worry about my son getting shot because he didn't take his teacher to prom, no. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I don't have kids, but if I did, I'd be worried. Anybody have young kids in here? Clap it up, you got some young kids. Yeah, how old? Eight and four, holy shit, yeah. That's, that's a scary age. Around four or five is scary. They speak full sentences, but they don't know what's embarrassing. <laughs> and, oof, 
It's a dangerous combo. <laughs> it's bad, right? Like your kid's probably at the grocery store. He's like, my mom has a bush. <laughs> Sometimes when the Lakers lose, my dad pulls my mom's hair. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> that is humiliating. Kids just do that, dude. And I remember being embarrassing when I was younger, too. I remember my mom taking me to one of those places where the water shoots up out of the different holes in the ground. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The little splash pads? Yeah. I was so excited, I ran out, and I guess I sat directly on top of one of the streams. Uh, and I kind of just hung out for a while. <laughs> And my mom noticed, and she was like, oh my God, Kim, go find someone to hang out with. Go find something else to do. <laughs> and I yelled back in front of everybody. I was like, no, it feels good. <laughs> 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 so she ran over, grabbed my arm, took me home, because she was so embarrassed. And because I had to get ready for prom later that night. <laughs> I remember the most embarrassing moment in my life. It was in the fourth grade. Uh, my best friend, Nikki, she had gotten a boyfriend and I was so jealous of her. And I asked her, I was like, how did you get a boyfriend? And she told me that she wrote a note telling him she wanted to kiss him on the playground and she put it in his backpack. And then he kissed her and they were boyfriend and girlfriend. I was like, I'm gonna do that. So I had this kid, Ricky, that I had a crush on for years, for such a long time. I was obsessed with him. And I was like, I'm going to put a note in his backpack. I wrote the note, I put it in his backpack, and the next day I waited by the playground. And um, Ricky never showed up. <laughs> he didn't, I know. But these two little girls did. They were so excited to hurt my feelings. Um, <laughs> I did. They came running right up, and they were like, Ricky, let us read your note. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, and, and then they were like, and he doesn't want to kiss you because you have a mustache. Oh. I know. And the worst part was I didn't even know. <laughs> no one told me. Uh, so I didn't get a boyfriend and I did have to keep the mustache because my mom didn't let me do anything about it. And it was really embarrassing for me, actually. It really fucked me up. I feel like it has affected me as an adult. Like, I... Uh, I don't like to hit on guys. I am scared of getting rejected and stuff like that. But I do feel like I've, I've done such cool shit because of it. I feel like it's made me braver. Like last month, I actually sold out my first show in my hometown and guess who was there? Yeah, thank you. And guess who showed up? No one and I still had a mustache. But. <laughs> But it's fine. Everything's cool. It fucking, I'm done. I, the dating thing is enough. I've, da I've tried dating everywhere, too. I lived, uh, I lived in L.A., New York. I, dating in L.A., I don't like it. Every dude in L.A. looks like he eats pussy out of a mason jar. <laughs> like, I, no offense, just none of them look like they have calluses on their hands. One time I said that at a show in L.A., and uh, everybody was quiet, and I was like, oh, you guys don't know what calluses are. <laughs> um, they're these things. They show up when you work hard. <laughs> And they just stared at me. I was like, oh, you don't know what working hard is. <laughs> okay. Um, I just don't, I don't like it. I don't even like the way that dudes in L.A. hit on you. Like, it's just not. Like, a dude in L.A. will be like, hey, girl, I like the way those jeans fit on you. Can I borrow them? <laughs> like, no. No. I'm good. I'm good on that. New York's not any better either. The last time I saw a hot guy in New York, I was leaving. And this dude was so good looking. He was walking right up towards me. He was like 6'2", green eyes, so handsome. He looked at me, I looked at him, and he went, move. <laughs> I, was, I was like, move what? <laughs> oh, I'll do whatever. I, um, I can't date a bi guy. Because it's kind of gay. <laughs> what do you want me to say? It's more gay than not. <laughs> it is. You dabble in pussy. <laughs> You fucked a chick once, you're like, maybe another time. <laughs> That's gay. -er. That's like if gay was gay. Um, <laughs> I'm too jealous to date a bi guy anyways. I'm Puerto Rican. Clap if you've dated a Puerto Rican. They're dead. <laughs> they were murdered. <laughs> we're jealous girlfriends. We are. I am a jealous girl. I'm so jealous. 
I'm so jealous. I don't even like if a dude has too many pigeons outside his window. <laughs> I'm like, who are you sending messages to? <laughs> No bonfires, no smoke signals. Sometimes I'll get in a guy's car and see where his Wi-Fi connects. <laughs> like, I am jealous. That's why I can't date a guy that's bi. Too jealous. Because then if I'm dating a guy that's bi, then I have to worry about girls and AIDS. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's HIV. Uh. I wish I could date women. That would be fun. Any lesbians in the house? Hell yeah. Oh, front row, of course. They're just like. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I should have known the blue hair and the, and the fucking lesbian stance and face. <laughs> I wish I could, dude. I wish I could because lesbian sex looks awesome. It looks like dolphins hugging. It looks sweet. It's like if Lisa Frank made sex. <laughs> It's awesome. I would. I would date a woman if I could because you guys are mean to us. Guys, you are. I, and I understand why. Because after my last breakup, I was so fed up with men that when I went on my dating app, I switched from men to women. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was the devil, but I immediately became a misogynist. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I switched from men to women and I was like, no fat chicks. Oh, oh God, no. Uh, 18 to 24. I was like, no. Oh, everyone's beautiful. Oh. I just switched back. I was like, I don't like who this is anymore. So I get it. I get it. I don't think that I could go down on a chick. That's, pr that's my issue. It, it's, it's hard for me to think about that. Like, honestly, I have OCD. I'm not like TikTok OCD. I have like real OCD. Um, so I'm scared of new textures. Uh, and I'm nervous about new smells and stuff too. And I'm not saying that vagina smell. That's crazy, right? Because I know that dicks smell, right? But, but I know that smell. <laughs> It's an old familiar, you know? It's like a, it's like a dad's breath who drinks. Like, it's home. <laughs> I could probably go down on a woman if it was like the olden days. Do you remember when Kings had like an assistant, like a jester, and that dude would taste the food to make sure it wasn't poisoned? <laughs> if I had one of those in the bed, he could be like, it's good, boss. <laughs> I dive right in. <laughs> no luck, though. My last boyfriend was probably my hottest boyfriend. Best looking guy I've ever dated. He was this Middle Eastern dude, really tall, really handsome, always smelled amazing. On a scale of one to 10, I would say he was a 9-11. Um, <laughs> Never forget <laughs> that dick. Okay. Um, steel beams. Uh, <laughs> you guys are fucking cool. You guys, you guys are a good crowd. I, I get worried about people getting offended now. People get so offended. It's so stupid. Especially going to a comedy show. If you're mad at a comedy show, you're the weirdo. <laughs> going to a comedy show and getting offended is like showing up to a gangbang and being mad you got come on you. <laughs> you know? What do you think we're doing here? <laughs> we're getting sticky. Um, plus, clean comedy sucks. I don't know if you've ever seen clean comedy, but it's not good. I promise you this. I've been doing this for a long time. If you go to a comedy club and you watch a grown man and he does 45 minutes of clean jokes, <laughs> he touches kids. Um, <laughs> oh, Shopey, Shopey! <laughs> Stay away from my knees. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure, man. It's a lot of pressure as a woman. It is in stand-up. Because I've, I've seen it for a long time. It's really easy for the guys. I never want to bomb. I never want to do bad. You know what they say about women, right? You tweeted it. Um, <laughs> they say we're not funny, so I feel like I always have to prove that I'm funny. I feel like the guys don't have that pressure. They come on stage, they fuck a stool, they get a special. <laughs> like, uh, but it's different for women. It is. Even when I'm doing well, I feel like people are hating on me. It sucks. The first time I got on TV, I was so excited to see what people were saying. And the first comment I read said, whose dick did she suck to get on TV? 
I know, I was like, uh, who's offering dick suckings for that? <laughs> what am I, a fucking idiot? <laughs> I suck dick for less. <laughs> In college one time, I think I sucked dick for shrimp cocktail. Like, <laughs> if I could suck dick to get on TV, you guys would see me on 64 TV shows. <laughs> My lips would be all chapped on succession. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's hard out here as a woman. It's dangerous doing comedy as a woman. You work at night, you're by yourself all the time. And women, we, we're like, women are like catalytic converters. <laughs> like, they can't be out at night unprotected. <laughs> Someone's gonna take them. <laughs> you know? That's why I train. That's why I train jujitsu. I did it when I started stand up a long time ago. And I trained at a really good school. I train at this place called Henzo Gracie. If you know anything about Henzo Gracie, it's one of the best jujitsu schools you can go to. I'm a blue belt. And um, I do, I feel much more confident. Like, I feel like I could beat up anybody in this room that's a woman. <laughs> that's not the problem. It just sucks. It sucks. Because I know. No matter how much I train, like I could be a brown belt, a black belt, like you could just like punch me in the face and knock me out. You know what I mean? Like I know that biologically I'm not stronger than a man. Don't tell the left. Um, <laughs> I just feel like with the training and all the money I pay, like when it comes to protecting myself, like you could rate me, but well, you're not gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> not on my watch, baby. <laughs> Unless you like getting choked, but then you might come. I have my first stalker, not to brag. Yeah, he's pretty intense. I knew he was a stalker because he started coming to all of my shows, and then I started noticing that he was following me on tour. So one night I would be doing New York, and the next night I would be doing Canada, and he'd be at both shows. So I was like, that's kind of scary. And then after the shows, he started sending me messages and they were pictures of myself. And they would say things like, uh, I should have taken you home this night. Really scary stuff. I had to hire, it's a true story, I had to hire a private detective and everything. And the last time I saw him was a couple months ago. He was waiting outside of a comedy club and he got stopped by security and I walked past him and he yelled out to me. He was like, Kim, please, I need to talk to you. Please, and he yelled out, the voices in my head, bad start. <laughs> He goes, the voices in my head are telling me that you hold the answers to everything, that you have the key to the universe. And I feel like this guy is not that bad. He's <laughs> <laughs> kind of a genius. <laughs> I mean, the man should be a casting agent. <laughs> he sees talent. So now we're fucking. <laughs> I don't know. Sue me. Sue me. I do have a question. Do you guys think that conjoined twins were annoyed when they, them pronouns came out? <laughs> They're like, that's our name. <laughs> we're them. <laughs> they were the first they, thems. They were. You think they shake every time they see a bitch with blue hair? Just don't we all? Um, <laughs> what happens if one of them dies? I know it's a dark question. Don't worry, you guys. There's no conjoined twins in here. <laughs> I put that on my writer. <laughs> if you see one, get him out of here. <laughs> no freaks at my show. <laughs> Um, but really, what happens if one dies? Does it just like dangle there? <laughs> like, like a fucking skin tag? <laughs> like, you have to cover it with a hat when you want to hang out with your friends? <laughs> it's not my sister. <laughs> it's not my fault. My algorithm's been really fucked up lately. I, uh, I gotta stay off TikTok. I've been on it too much. I'll spend eight hours on TikTok, I swear to God. But it gets bad. If you like the wrong video, the algorithm can get sad. It gets dark, you know. You like one bad video, just dead, sick people everywhere. 
It's the punishment. Last week I had this video. Is this dude? He had terminal cancer, and his girlfriend was shaving his head because he was losing his hair. And in the middle of shaving his head, she stopped and she started shaving her own. And I fucking lost it. Cause can you imagine having terminal cancer, then having to pretend you like your girlfriend's haircut? <laughs> It's like he's already nauseous. <laughs> Plus she's gonna need a new boyfriend soon, so. <laughs> Cause he died. Um, I gotta stop chopping cheap. I know it's time, it's time. I've, I went to Forever 21 last week, which does not feel good at 32. Um, <laughs> the yellow bags get brighter. Um, and I bought these shoes there. I was so excited. There were these white boots. They were like $6. I was so excited about them. I bought them. I wore them on stage that night. Big mistake. My feet hurt so bad. I could barely walk. Uh, I had blood all over my feet. Uh, it wasn't mine. It was the kids who made them. <laughs> They're Forever 7. <laughs> Those are my real red bottoms. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love those sweatshop kids. I do. I keep getting older and they stay the same age. That's right. If that joke offended you and you own an iPhone, you're an idiot. <laughs> Read a book. Uh, you guys have been a fun crowd. Everyone having fun tonight? Hell yeah, dude, I love your shirt. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. This dude's got the craziest laugh in the world. You sound like a dog that got a chew toy. Fuck. Crazy fuck. You look like you still spell boobs on a calculator. <laughs> you look like your arms shake when you have sex. Uh, <laughs> you look like your dick smells like a book. <laughs> You look smart, dude, okay? It's very scholarly. Very scholarly. We got the blonde girl in the front, hell yeah. When I was little, I wanted to be blonde so bad. More than blonde hair and blue eyes, I just wanted pink nipples. <laughs> that, was, that was my goal. I know which crayon everyone wanted, okay? All right. Hell yeah. What's up with you two? Where'd you meet? In your band? Do you have a band together? What's the band called? Sugar Lips? What in the upside down pineapple is going? You guys are giving swinger energy. You guys have, do you guys have like weird threesomes and stuff? Yeah, they do. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, they have her here. I love it. Yeah, I didn't know they put the horny people in the front. <laughs> it makes sense. They have these four dudes just edging in front of me. I'm trying to focus on my work, and these dudes are just... <laughs> like, it's hard to be a woman out here, okay? <laughs> trying to do your job. I'm sorry, you guys are not even touching yourselves. And I did it for the bit. <laughs> What's going on with you? You've got, you've got some, like, intense... You look, you, have the, you look like you know where John JonBenet Ramsey is. <laughs> like, <laughs> you've got eyes that hold secrets. What's going on? What's the secret? Are you okay, ma'am? It'd be great to save a life up here as well. That would go very viral. Fuck you, Matt Reif. Um. <laughs> you two married? Siblings? Do you know each other or am I being racist? Please, I'm on tape right now. <laughs> if you could not, they're watching me. <laughs> you have to know each other. Oh, you guys are together. Okay, whatever. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm so stressed I was going to get canceled. What do you do for work? I'm a campaign manager. Yeah, you are. <laughs> for what? Uh, like a political campaign. For which one? Aren't there a lot? Like... I don't really want that. Oh, you can't say? <laughs> Sounds like we're all doing cocaine with Biden after this. <laughs> yeah! I don't know. That'd be sick. <laughs> Hell yeah, Selena, bitch, I thought you died. <laughs> uh, go 
como la flor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. You guys have been cool. Fucking. It's always scary doing these tapings. Anyone could be in here, you know? And dudes get weird sometimes, especially on the internet. The guys that come r in real life, they're really cool. I don't know what happens to you guys when you get online. Something scary happens. <laughs> Do you hear the women laughing? <laughs> they know. They were all innocent, like, we've never done anything scary. <laughs> guys on the internet get crazy, dude. Uh, just uh, the last message I got from a dude was insane. This dude <laughs> messaged me and he offered me $5,500 if I would answer a video call and watch him jack off for 60 seconds. Now. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys first. Is there anybody in here? who wouldn't answer a video call for 60 seconds for almost six grand to watch someone jack off. Okay, good. <laughs> because if I asked the whole room and everybody's like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, I would've been like, yeah, what whore would? <laughs> Hi. Um, but I said yes, of course I said yes. I said yes. He said the only thing I had to do was laugh at him, call him ugly, and say his dick was small. I was like, I was gonna do that anyways. <laughs> Easy. So he sends over the money, right? It goes straight into my bank account. Now I'm nervous as fuck. Now I feel like I have to do this. I'm pacing my room back in the fourth. I'm sweating like, it's my first day as a sex worker. Um, <laughs> but I try to calm myself down. I'm like, this guy's gonna look like both the thousand pound sisters. It'll be fine, <laughs> right? The call comes in, I answer the call, and this motherfucker is hot with a huge dick. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even do my makeup for this, you know? Like, the fuck? Now he's hot, he's got a big dick, and he's got $6,000 to throw away. I'm in love with this man. <laughs> and I have to pretend he's disgusting? I didn't know it was an acting gig. I'm a horrible actor, so the whole time on video, I'm going like, yucky, yucky. <laughs> in my tummy. <laughs> But, but I do the whole thing, right? I hang in there. I hang up at 59 seconds for some self-respect. Um, and everything's great. I'm, I'm happy with the deal. Everything's good. I don't feel too slutty about it. Three days later, this motherfucker hits me up and he's like, hey Kim, I see that you're coming to my town for a show. I'd love to come watch. I was like, oh no. <laughs> You've chosen who you are in my life. <laughs> you know, this wasn't a beach or meet and greet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean though? Like you could be a dude that comes to a comedy show or you could be the guy that masturbated and Venmoed me. Like, you made your bed, <laughs> now come in it. Uh, <laughs> and I'll say one last thing about this dude, just to be serious for a moment. Obviously someone that's like into shit like this, like something happened to this guy when he was younger. I don't know what it is, I don't know what went on. He might have gotten bullied or abused. Whatever it is for him to be into this, like I feel like this dude should kill himself. <laughs> no, I mean that. I feel like this guy should take his own life. And I, I'm seeing some of you, you're like, that's really harsh but he paid me 600 more dollars to say that tonight. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm Kim Comden. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you.